Okay, so I have the new camera holder thingy. The I lost the box already, of course. It's over there. The thing that holds the camera still. It's it's kind of cool. It's less precarious than it was leaning against a bottle on top of a box. So hopefully there'll be no accidents. <sighs> Had the thought to talk about tone policing. But not tone policing when other people tell us smile or don't be so sad or you sure sound bitter on that. Not that kind of tone policing. The kind of tone policing we do to ourselves. When we step it back a notch deliberately, when I have a habit of getting really enthusiastic and it burns my spoons, so I try to tamp down my enthusiasm on stuff. That's me tone policing myself. One of the examples I came up with, I'm out of breath. That's the, the sighing has nothing to do with the subject matter and everything to do with when you have lung problems, you have to forcibly exhale to try to clear the air like that in order to take another breath. Anyway, I love this cup. Okay. It's, I don't know if you can see it or not. It's a rustic ceramic, but very, very well done. It's a beautiful color. It's a beautiful cup. Can you see how big this cup is? Okay. So the idea when I got it was that's a really big cup of coffee. That That's amazing. And it is for the first quarter of the cup. And then the coffee gets cold. And then I'm stuck with a really big cup that I've got to finish the cup of coffee on. The other thing with the paralysis, this side, right there, there's numbness. On this side, with the reconstruction, I have no nerve endings through any of here. There's nothing. Okay, there, it feels like a dentist shot. It's felt that way most of my adult life. On this side, it's just slightly numb because I had the stroke. Okay, so, big cup. Go to take a drink. I cannot feel if I'm leaking. Pour, down, pour, absolutely pour. I know this. Small cup, in public. Yes, I leave my spoons in my cup. That tells me it's a hot beverage and not a cold beverage. When I go to take a drink from this, enough of the mouth is covered that the chances of spilling are pretty slim. But I've been known to pour an entire cup of coffee down my face. I've also been known, because of the dyslexia and the brain issue, to bring the cup within one inch of my face and tip it and pour the coffee down my, not even touching my lips. It happens. If you're talking to me in public and I pick up a cup, it's completely possible for me to go, oh, blah, 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 oops. And it's some wiring the right left hand brain split brain phenomena wiring issue I don't know this cup tone policing I'm getting there I love this cup it was given to me by somebody it's special to me I don't drink out of it that often because it's a waste of coffee or cocoa to drink out of it because it's not as pleasurable to drink out of as I want it to be but I love the cup Tone policing. I have a couple of people in my life that I love. A couple of people in my life that I care about, that I don't want to hurt. So there are times when I will not say something that I want to say. I will ignore something because it's not worth it to push their buttons. I have a couple other people in my life that if I say something, I know they're going to take the bait. And there are times when I just don't want to deal with it. It's not a matter of loving them. It's not a matter of caring or respecting them. It's a matter of it's just not worth it. So I tone police. I tone it down. Interesting word usage. Tone police. People tend to interpret that from a civilian police state thought process. You're tone policing. You're being a, a grammar Nazi. You're you're 
enforcing the rules, tone policing. The rules are you must be calm. I hear tone police and I hear the military use of the word police. Police your zone. Police your desk. Police your mess. To police your personal space is to pick up and put away and straighten and clean. That's what it means to police a zone. That's how I hear the word tone police, or hear the phrase tone police. Tone police is to think about what you're saying, think about the audience that's going to hear it, and decide if you're in an appropriate environment. Quite frequently you're not. Facebook is where I do my political stuff. I don't do political stuff on Instagram, except food, because I don't think food should be political. Clean water, clean food, save the earth, recycle. My environmental greener, Evergreen State College greener, hippie stuff is on Instagram, along with my hand spun yarns and my, my cooking and that kind of things. And I find it interesting that the random requests, follow requests that I get, or random follows I get on Instagram, come from spammers. Yeah, we all get that and preppers. I've never posted anything prepper on Instagram. I've never posted anything conservative on Instagram. I've never posted anything about buckets of beans on Instagram, but I post some spinning and I post a recipe and I get five survivalist outdoorsmen preppers following me. Boom. Now mind you, they're all just looking for follow backs and they drop off within a week or two when you don't follow them back. But it's interesting that I get that. On Facebook, I post the political stuff. I try not to post the same old, same old, the things everybody else is posting, because I don't see a point to it. If 15 of my friends have posted this news article, there's no reason for me to post that news article. I'll just click like on a couple of theirs. It doesn't mean I didn't see it. It doesn't mean it's not something I'm aware of. It means it doesn't... It isn't an issue for me to post it. Enough people already have. If I come across a news article and nobody's posted it yet, I'll, I'll share it. I'm not as active and aggressively in the news anymore since I quit freelancing. The hubby and I have talked a couple of times about my picking up some freelance contracts. I picked up a ghostwriting contract a while back. It's the only writing I've done recently, and meh. Need the money, but not... Not bad enough to pursue it, I guess. Facebook's where I share personal. Facebook's where I talk to people. YouTube, I'm just trying to do... I want to do more how-to videos and tutorials and stuff, but that's going to take having a space to do it because right here... It's like if I wanted to do a bead tutorial... Let's see if I can move this. I don't know if I can. Yeah, yeah, I can. That's my beading space. Can you see that? Because I can't see the front. Okay. It's a mess right now, but that's my beading space. It's three feet by three feet at the max, which is enough. It is. I, I'm half making an excuse to wait. Yeah, I've got to get this thing snugged in again. Hold on. There we go. Is that right? That's right. That worked. That worked. I want to do cooking tutorials, I want to do spinning tutorials, I want to do how to do how I do acrylic painting. I want to do all those kind of things. I'm not ready to do them yet. Right now with YouTube, I'm in the I pick one friend and I think about something they want to hear and I talk about it. I have my list of stuff that I'll get to again more on later. Um trying to keep these around the 10 minute mark for now because that seems to be a good spot, and we're at 9 minutes and 16 seconds now. So I'll be tuning out in a half and 30 seconds. Tone policing is knowing your market, knowing your audience. Self-tone policing. I do it. We all do it. It's not cussing in front of the teacher and cussing out on the playground. And it's this split personality and current 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 society is broken the world is broken right now I don't care what side of the equation you're on 
we haven't been this broken in a very long time. And I think a lot of it comes down to we're policing ourselves and we're not being self-honest. I'm not saying what I want to say. I, I'm not, it's not here to come out. I, I, I know the concept, but I'm not getting there. I'll think about it some more and I'll probably talk about it again in a couple more days. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.